It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmore with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Uh, a little stormy out here today, as you know, if you live locally here. And it looks like uh, it was about 80 something degrees, 83. Not too hot yet. Lots of cloud cover out there. And uh, look at those clouds. They're absolutely beautiful out there off the ocean today uh, with the sun coming up. Well, I had a good long weekend. Went to the uh, Florida United Numismatist show up in Orlando. If you watch the uh, video from, um, let me adjust this mic here. Sorry about that. If you watch the video from, uh, uh, I think, Wednesday or was it? I was there. Yeah, I was actually there Thursday and Friday uh, and part of Wednesday and uh, Saturday. Very successful show. Huge show, actually. Um, lots of uh, uh, buyers. Silver dollars were super hot uh, on the collectible spectrum. Uh, as far as bullion goes, bullion is still hot. Silver is still tough to get in a lot of different forms. Uh, still big premiums on it despite what uh, uh, certain things, what we're going to get into here shortly, uh, say that there seems to be no shortage. But again, corporate media, corporate media, as I always say, if you listen to corporate media when it comes to precious metals, you'll go broke. Uh, let's take a look at the spot prices. They are down. The uh, coin said the lucky, or I don't know if the lucky or unlucky, uh, did show a uh, bull today. And it uh, looks like uh, that's true for everything but platinum. Platinum, or true for platinum, I guess, and not true for gold and silver as of right now. But let's see, you know, we're, we're at the end of the day is not over, and markets could be up overall today. Uh, let's take a look at the ranges last night. You know, of course, we closed yesterday uh, and probably opened yesterday in this 1811 range. I did not look at markets last night to see, um, you know, what time they were hammered at. Um, you know, on East Coast time, I'm usually in bed by before midnight, and I'm up in the morning uh, probably pretty early. Uh, no less, didn't get a chance to check this morning. I had to take care of some stuff that I had to do uh, because I came back from the show. Uh, so I don't know if this is a, a, a New York uh, opening that's uh, uh, set around 1792 or perhaps last night, thin markets, uh, more monkey hammering took place. <clears throat> And it does. That's usually when it happens uh, in thin marketplaces that nobody would sell silver uh, or gold unless their intent was to drive prices down uh, and manipulate markets. That's my opinion. Uh, silver, uh, 25.90 overnight and 26.29. So kind of popping in that, it's like a 30, 40, 50 cent range. Silver's uh, been holding its own quite well, you know, despite the fact that it's down from its highs. Uh, uh, what was it, 28 and change or 29 or something like that not too long ago? Uh, it's a blur to me now. Uh, but it uh, looks like 25.90 to 26.29. So trading in a good range as well. Uh, platinum has handily broken that uh, uh, $1,100 mark pretty much. Not handily, but uh, it's 11.11 right now. What a cool number that is, too. 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, 35. Uh, overnight markets, again, I don't know when that happened, if it, New York markets or uh, overnight markets when platinum went up. But uh, it does look like it's up a little bit, as well as palladium. Uh, still great buying opportunities at these levels. Uh, in my opinion, anything below $2,000 gold is a steal, S-T-E-A-L. Uh, anything below uh, $30 in silver, in my opinion, is a steal, S-T-E-A-L. And, you know, it's quite... Quite frankly, I may tell you that uh, when it makes its next leg up and we're over that 2,000 mark, um, I may tell you that 2,000, 2,100 is a steal. And um, we're in a bull market. Just you know, how high will it go is is the real question. Um, and I don't just I don't see the uh, uh, central banks and uh, governments pulling themselves out of this tailspin uh, very easily without losing a, a large part of the uh, fuselage here <laughs> or a large part of the plane. Uh, I don't see it happening. I don't think it's going to be a soft landing at all. Uh, I think we're going to have a hard landing at some point. And uh, all they've done is just keep throwing more band-aids on the dam, and, uh, and that's not going to help. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Let's get into some interesting article here. Uh, a couple interesting articles, uh, GATA.org, one of my favorite sites when it comes to uh, uh, knowing what is going on in the precious metals world. And of course, anyone that's been listening to my videos for any length of time absolutely has this on their bookmark bar. If you're new to the videos, if you're new to these videos right here, I highly suggest that uh, GATA.org is on your bookmark bar and that you read these articles at least once a week. Um, a new gold back world reserve currencies comment. It's kind of interesting. Uh, we've talked about this a couple of time, uh, uh, a couple of times on our show. Um, I, I don't see, you know, I, uh, the, where I think it's cool that I'd love to see a gold back currency, back, you know, a gold, a gold backed, uh, uh, back, uh, bunch of currency uh, backed by uh, gold. You know, I just that was kind of redundant, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to see uh, uh, you know gold backing for sure. However, d 
I, I don't know. I mean, are, are central banks and governments that willing to uh, uh, give up the uh, fiat, the ability to uh, print endlessly? I mean, that's what happened to Nixon, more or less. Nixon was constrained by gold prices. He was constrained by he couldn't print more currency. So basically, uh, you know, because of wars, we had Vietnam, we had Korea prior to that. We were becoming a major, uh, you know, the, the military industrial complex was uh, sucking more money and more money and more money. Governments got bigger and bigger and bigger. Nixon knew this. Nixon and saw this, uh, uh, and he knew that uh, he couldn't continue uh, being a politician and spending money uh, it, like all the other politicians, uh, regardless of whether they're red or blue, uh, that he couldn't continue that policy without uh, um, uh, getting us off the gold standard and getting us onto a fiat standard where, where they could just print endlessly just to fund their follies. And if you can see any level of that in the extreme example is what we're seeing right now. Uh, QEs, uh, QE1s, uh, uh, bailouts, uh, uh, you name it. This is the, uh, this is the uh, failure of the uh, Keynesian system here uh, is exactly what we're seeing. And uh, let's take a look at this. Well, anyway, I won't go into that. I kind of doubt that we'll see a gold-backed currency. I just think they'll just reset the clock somehow uh, and just keep up with the fiat uh, uh, system that has served them. Notice I'm not saying us has served them so well, the politicians, the governments, the central banks, not us. That served them well. And I can't see them giving that up. I just can't see it. Maybe, you know, I, I could be wrong. Uh, I did not listen to the article. Looks like I like uh, listening to uh, Lieb here, so uh, definitely worth a listen. And um, didn't read this one either. I'm sorry I was at the show all week. Hopefully some of you did. Some of it looks kind of cool. There's some uh, cool history stuff in the GATA.org site as well. Uh, can Reddit silver apes beat the market? This is what really uh, uh, caught my eye right here, and uh, it's a tra And I've been saying this for for some time. I said this about uh, the Reddit silver apes, um, uh, who I'm in big favor of. I mean, I won't say big favor of, but uh, I support the Reddit silver apes, not because I really believe that they have the capability with the numbers that they have and the money that they have to really change that market dramatically, but the amount of enthusiasm and the amount that that, that will grow, that enthusiasm that they have will grow. And I think what's, uh, and what I was always afraid of happening is that the Reddit apes would get, you know, so enthusiastic that they really believe that 122,000 or whatever it is now, 180 or whatever, even a couple hundred thousand uh, people of medium means uh, would be able to kind of drain that market or kill that market, take that market down. Uh, you know, not at the numbers I think even currently they have today that's going to happen. I believe that like that last deal with May 3rd and before, um, I, I felt really bad but I kind of, I felt like the media was setting the silver uh, ape, uh, Reddit silver ape people up for failure. I really believe that. I, I it kind of, it was obvious when you uh, pulled yourself outside and looked at the big picture. Now, that's exactly what they were doing. They're, they're setting, and this article kind of talks about this as well. And of course, Reuters, of course it's Reuters, by Peter Hobson. I don't know who Peter Hobson is, but Reuters, as I, as I said, if you listen to corporate media on precious metals, you'll go broke. Um, don't ever listen to corporate media. They're talking heads. I mean, there's a few people I might listen to that are on corporate media, like Peter Schiff, occasionally on CNBC or whatever else he's on, um, and a few other guys, maybe Sprott, um, Hemke, although I've never really seen him on TV. And the truth of the matter is, I don't watch corporate TV. I, I haven't watched it since 2008. I turned the television off back in 2008, at least TV news I did. Uh, I have not watched it honestly since then, whether it's Fox, CNBC, MSM, I haven't watched them. Even the Bloomberg scene, you know, I don't watch them. Uh, I think it's the worst thing you can do. They set up narratives. They, 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 it's a single narrative system. Uh, and uh, you know, each may have their own narrative, but uh, uh, they're, they're not interested in uh, free thinking people and they're not interested in teaching people anything. They're interested in leading people over a cliff, in my opinion. Uh, can Reddit silver apes beat the market? Uh, let's read this right here because it's kind of uh, what I was just talking about and, and how um, I think they were making fun of the silver apes here and uh, the Reddit people uh, in, in, in some ways. And let's let's just read a few of those. Kerry, first, it starts off like this. This is typical corporate media. Kerry, they got to use an example of somebody, uh, and, and this example sets the pace for the uh, the whole thing. And they're not saying anything bad about Kerry Craig. Here, fifty six has worked in kitchens all his life. Since March, he spent around hundred dollars with half a spare cash on silver coins. He's part of a growing social movement who says they are buying bars and coins for protection from a coming age of inflation. Uh, thanks to a, commu a community of like-minded silver stackers gathering on social media platform, uh, Reddit-based cracker says he also feels empowered. Um, 
So the way I read this article at first is they're starting out with this uh, gentleman here that probably doesn't have much experience in silver and is buying a large amounts of silver. I think they're setting, again, they're setting the carry up here to uh, uh, that maybe he's wrong and he's going to lose all this hard uh, hard work money that, he, you know, all this money that he's had. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, I haven't read the whole thing, actually, so I'm reading it along with you. Inspired by Reddit forum Wall Street bets, some of the 122,000 strong community hope to corner the market and bring down what they say is an unjust banking system. Market professionals say that that is unlikely to see. There's plenty of silver, and central bankers in the United States and Europe expect inflation to stay single and low digits. So I don't know if you see what they did right here. They took and they they, they compared this gentleman who has worked in kitchens and all his life, not market person, uh, spends all half of his money on silver coins, uh, and and they do it in a nice way. And then they bring in the market professionals say that this is unlikely to succeed. Um, so let's see where we go from here. Uh, and, and Europe expect inflation to stay in single low digits. <laughs> that's a laugh. Uh, but bankers aren't getting through to this group. Like, of course not. And that's probably a good thing they're not getting through to this group. And if there's any silver apes out there listening, don't listen to these people. Don't listen to corporate media. They don't have your best interest in mind. Uh, and you'll go broke listening to them when it comes to precious metals. Uh, Trust me on this. Uh, but bankers aren't getting through to this group. There's a bit of anger like, fuck the system. <laughs> I like this already. If there's a back door to wealth, I might take the door because the front door is locked, said Cracker. Uh, the bankers and others have basically shut the door for everyone who is not themselves. Um, that's kind of a funny sta uh, statement. And uh, he's kind of right about that. There's a bit of anger out there, but you don't really buy on in anger, you know. Um, there's a lot of things you shouldn't do in anger, and obviously uh, we could start quoting them, but uh, uh, anger is not a good place to... Uh, uh, start your day at. It's not a good place to uh, uh, think things through with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so anyways, uh, the core movement of the Reddit community is called Wall Street Silver. Formed in January at Wall Street, Betts was marshalling an uprising of ordinary people against the financial elites. Uh, that's a little uh, misleading too because there were some big whales involved with the Reddit community Wall Street Betts um, that you don't see with the Reddit community Wall Street Silver. Um, and they were kind of mingled in with there, and they were there to make big bucks uh, in a market that they were familiar with. So, you know, um, trying to compare the two, Wall Street Bets and Wall Street Silver, uh, is, is apples and oranges. The uh, Wall Street Bets was you know, co-mingled in with big whales that were, were, were hidden in that group and using that group to make their billions as well. Uh, you're not seeing that in Wall Street Silver, you know. Um, I think the support you might be seeing are pe from people like uh, 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 sellers and stuff like uh, the Sprott people, you know, and uh, King World and these guys, the guys that do the uh, articles and the uh, videos and such. Uh, so, um, where was I going from there? <laughs> well, anyways, Reuters spoke to more than 20 members who call themselves Silverbacks and Apes have a home page featuring an image of an army primates on the move. Of uh, and, and say things like ape like shiny, and they organize rage days on which everyone buys together. Uh, the group's founder is a 24-year-old former car salesman and living with his parents. See, look at this. This this is exactly what I'm talking about. The form the group's founder, Ivan Bihuki, is a 24-year-old uh, former car salesman living with his parents in Canada. Now is the time to wake up and take back. And again, what did I tell you about corporate media and rooters? This is really a hit piece. Now, granted. Um, you know, he's a 24-year-old kid. Come on. Uh, he's got a lot of enthusiasm. He's part of a group and started part of a group that was uh, moving silver around. Uh, don't make it anything more than it is. The, the kid was not a uh, major trader uh, in, in metals markets. He, he doesn't have a, a PhD uh, in business, uh, obviously. Uh, how, however, no less, why... You see the comparison of what they're doing here and what they're really trying to do is, and I said this a long time ago, corporate media and the big banks and the people that don't want to see the price of silver go up and who make a lot of money doing that are going to do two things. They're going to manipulate this group of people and or they're going to uh, throw them under the bus and make them look bad. And already you got a Reuters article doing that right here. I don't need to go much past this article. Uh, uh, you know, Again, uh, the first guy is crack, uh, Craker, Mr. Craker, who is a cook, a chef, or something like that. They made made a big point in telling you that, and then they go in to, uh, and subtly tell you shortly after that. Reuters does is that, uh, oh well, the, the big banks and the educated people obviously know this are wrong, uh, but still, here you've got uh, guys like this and the group's founder, who is a 24-year. Listen, it's an attempt to throw that group under a bus. Uh, don't don't 
pay attention to it. Keep building your, to the silver apes out there and the people that are uh, on those Wall Street bets, listen, your enthusiasm, uh, your, your, uh, to expect that your group was going to uh, move markets overnight. And I think that the media tried to help you believe that as well. And, uh, um, uh, it, you know, it was not, it's not a realistic expectation. I don't really believe that most of you even it, it believe that, but that's what the media is painting about you. Okay. So, uh, again, it's trying to set you up to look bad, I'm trying to set you up to look like a bunch of uneducated people that don't know what you're doing. Uh, and I think that's wrong, but that's typical media. That's typical Reuters. That's typical corporate media. Uh, so, so they're going to go into, uh, uh, I'm not even going to talk about the details here because uh, the guy's an idiot. I'm going to just come right out and say it. The guy's an idiot. He, 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 uh, well, hold on. He's not an idiot. I shouldn't say he's an idiot. He can, he can write an article, but he clearly uh, uh, is done this article as a hit piece on the silver Reddit people uh, without actually being nasty about it. I don't know if you notice how he, again, he subtly has told you all the Silver 8 people and all the Silver Reddit people that you're stupid. <laughs> he's, he said that in the first couple of lines here. Uh, and he's going to go into some detail. Uh, it scares me every day when this bomb will burst, says Tim Hack, a 23-year-old stacker in Germany. Um, and let's see if he uh, quotes another experts down here. Uh, yeah, in some ways, that's correct. Now, he's the expert now. In some ways, that's correct. Contracts representing around. So he takes what somebody says that doesn't have a lot of education in silver uh, in the silver apes group, in the silver reddit group, uh, as well meaning and intention and, and what they do know, uh, respectfully what they do know, he takes that and then he twists what they say into what he believes himself as an expert or what he's heard from experts is the correct thing. Uh, you know, take these kind of articles by Reuters and by, again, any of the corporate media that you see with a grain of salt because they suck for the most part, and so did this one. Uh, Peter Hobson, terrible job, sir. Um, and to all the Reddit 8 people out there and people that have been stacking silver, don't listen to these people. What did I, what did I say over and over? You're just going to go broke. Uh, so... BlackRock, uh, I really this is really cool, and I'm not going to go over this because there's a lot of really interesting detail here. Uh, BlackRock Silver Corp, and what is the URL for that? Well, Visual Capitalist, uh, go to Visual Capitalist and type in BlackRock Silver Corp. Uh, bring the silver back to the silver state, and uh, more or less, uh, they're talking about uh, uh, mining of silver in in Nevada and some other cool stuff. This is kind of more or less the history, and, and it, again, they talk about a specific state where that uh, uh, Black Rock is located. And nearly 100 years since commercial production shut down, Black Rock aims to add a new chapter to the story of one of Nevada's most prolific silver districts. Now, I don't even know how to pronounce this, but it looks like Tonopah, uh, if I'm correct, Tonopah or something like that. Uh, well, it looks like uh, a big mine is going to be opening up, and you should see some more production out of this, and uh, history of production. Lots of cool stuff here. Not going to stop here. I'm going to go on to a few more articles, but I did want to show you this. Bringing the silver back to the silver state. Uh, type that in uh, your browser with the uh, word visual capitalist and uh, read it. It's kind of really cool. Uh, where do we go from here? Well, oh, uh, zero, ZH. Also, as you know, I like ZH because it has a lot of different opinions and different uh, viewpoints and uh, more than one single narrative that we get from the corporate media. Uh, Reddit Wall Street Silver gets Reuters snobbery. So more or less by uh, Jay Handers. Jay Handers kind of points out exactly what I felt and the same thing. I'm, I guess we're both kind of repeating the same thing. Uh, apparently the silver squeeze bullion buying movement has reached the, the they laugh at you phase. Um, that's pretty cool too. Uh, Reuters gave Reddit's Wall Street Silver some condescending coverage last week. That's a perfect word. Condescending is what we were just reading. Uh, coverage last week, the same day that Basel III rules were being declared. Uh, also this week, the Russian sovereign wealth fund again has declared it's completely cut holdings of fiat federal. Uh, this is a subject that you and I uh, have discussed for the last year now, folks. Uh, we've discussed about the de-dollarization and how the United States, and it's not that the Russians hate Americans, uh, or, or, or they hate the dollar. It's not that the Chinese hate the dollar. It's not that uh, uh, any of them hate the dollar. In fact, they all love the dollar. They prefer to stay on the dollar. But what happened is we did it years and years ago. We weaponized the dollar against countries. I mean, we did it against Libya, Venezuela, Cuba, uh, and, and, you know, we shut them out of the banking system. So when, when you're on a global currency that's a global dollar, 
uh, and, and you're running a small country and, and your dollar doesn't do too, and all the people love your money uh, or, or love the uh, U.S. dollar, you let them use it. Like in Venezuela, the dollar traded pretty freely, I think. Uh, Cuba and these other countries. Hell, even in Russia, the dollar traded pretty freely uh, uh, during the uh, um, uh, embargo days or during the Cold War. So, uh, but the United States uh, government, uh, the, the uh, Defense Department, I don't know who does it, the, the DOJ, Department of Justice, whatever, politicians have managed to take that dollar and weaponize it. And, uh, uh, and, and, and at some point, countries like Russia said, you know what, they're going to turn it against us. They already have in some ways with embargoes and stuff. Why would we want to stay with the dollar? Why would we want to? And, and what, but really what happens is you have just lost the support of hundreds of millions of people. The support of your product. What is your product? The U.S. dollar. So by weaponizing the dollar, the Department of Justice, our government, our officials, uh, they cut, they stepped on their own dicks more or less. They, they cut off their own dicks uh, uh, in the long term because uh, now you've got a de-dollarization going, uh, going on. And what happens in de-dollarization? Where do those dollars that are coming back out of Russia, China, everywhere come? They come back to us, folks. And that's in the form of hyperinflation, potentially, if they can't control the flow. Uh, and we've got that already going. There's bad stuff going on. Uh, Anyways, oh boy, I digress. Uh, let's take a look here. And the other Eastern nations and government mints have returned to take large swaths of wholesale and retail physical bullion market shares. Um, the silver, oh, okay, it goes in a few things. Uh, I didn't uh, look at this article here. It, it looks like it's on YouTube. Uh, can Reddit silver apes beat the market? And that's done by Reuters. Uh, again, very condescending. Don't even click it. You know what? Don't even click that. Or don't give him the watches. Don't give him the views. Don't give, you know... Uh, I don't. Uh, I turned, as I said, I turned corporate media off in 2008 entirely in every way, shape, and form pretty much. I mean, I can't tell you that I haven't looked at some car corporate articles and watched some stuff on the computer. I don't watch television, period. Um, however, uh, you know, I, I don't really don't watch uh, CNN online. I don't watch uh, uh, Fox online. I don't watch any of them. I'll occasionally watch Peter Schiff if he's doing an article with CNBC. You know, it's on YouTube. I'll click some uh, ones that I want to see. But I stay away from them because, as I said, they, they're clueless when it comes to precious metals. They quote the narrative of the central banks and the government. Uh, that's all they want you to hear. Uh, it's either because uh, the reporters are uh, complicit, they're, they're involved with it, or they're stupid and or both. That's my opinion. Uh, kind of like this guy. Uh, again, that's my opinion. The guy that, uh, the Reuters guy that did that article. Well, uh, since the LMB, uh, LBMA entered the gold market in 1987, the divergence between the Eastern and Western um, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, we go blah, blah, blah. It's a good article here to read. Uh, it's just uh, kind of going over some things that we've already talked about. And uh, I don't want to keep uh, uh, going over the same. Hard not to, in the precious metals business, not talk about the same thing over and all, over and over because it really all revolves around fiat currency. It all revolves around bad economic policy. It all revolves around. So it's hard not to talk about this every day when we do these daily show, folks. Uh, for some of you, I do apologize, and you're familiar with all this stuff, but we have to talk about it. Uh, Gold Lessons from the 1970s, a good article by uh, Variant Perception, who I'm not familiar with at all. Uh, it is on ZH, which you can read for free. And the long-term case for gold remains intact. 100% agree with this. The ratio of total U.S. M1 adjusted for the recent savings redwells, uh, blah, 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 to gold has continued to surge higher, showing the underlying trend remains bullish. And that's what I've been saying uh, myself. I, I concur 100% with this gentleman um, that we are still in a long-term bullish market. And you will see pullbacks. Uh, and pullbacks are, are great for what? Buying the freaking dips. Uh, so a bullish long-term trend, and he points this out here, does not mean things move in a straight line. They don't go up like this. You see my hand? They don't go like this, folks. They go like this. Happens in every bull market. Even the bull, gold bull market during the high of inflations of 70 saw an extended crash of 40% for one and a half years to, uh, from 74 to 75. And another 20% crash in 1980, ultimately being ending up uh, a 50% peak uh, from, uh, to trough uh, drawdown. So you can take a look there. There, 1974, 1975, uh, and boom, 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 uh, gold price, you'll see. Took a hit during that period. And then you'll see two-year minus CPI. Uh, look at that inverse chart there, relationship with the uh, uh, CPI as well. Uh, but interestingly enough, counterintuitively, though, and he points this out, this uh, inverse relationship we're doing, uh, or I'm pointing out to you right here, he says the same thing. Counterintuitively, the extreme negative rates observed in 74 and 75 in 1980 market tops in gold. In 1975, private U.S. citizens were allowed to start owning gold in a macro environment of highlighted inflation. So one might have expected gold prices to rise from 75, but the exact opposite happened. So, uh, 
you know, tr trying to tie inflation with gold or trying to tie oil with gold. And they did that in the 80s, too. They tied oil to gold. Um, all of it kind of, you know, iffy. Uh, even inflation, uh, trying to tie it with uh, inflation or deflation. However, what you can always tie the price of gold to is what he pointed up here is the money supply, the increasing money supply. Uh, and as I said, uh, weaponizing the dollar has not helped us at all either. I think they're going to continue to do that kind of nonsense. Uh, real quickly, uh, I'm not going to talk about cryptocurrency, but uh, one of the things I've talked about cryptos for a long time is that uh, uh, governments and banks, and I know it sounds like a broken record, but governments and banks hate competition, and uh, uh, they're simply not going to allow it, or they're going to uh, heavily reg and or they're going to heavily regulate it, and or they're going to adopt it themselves. Um, and that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing that the uh, uh, big central banks are all trashing Bitcoin. The Department of Justice is, uh, you know, di different uh, law departments or, or, you know, not law departments, but uh, uh, the law enforcement in different countries and the, and the lawmakers are starting to crack down on cryptos. Um, and, you know, and again, I've said this for a while. It, my conspiracy theory is, is that uh, Bitcoin was just an experiment to get the young people used to a cashless society. Uh, that's my, my, my uh, I, and again, conspiracy. I'm fully going to admit that. So, a uh, good article there as well. I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is our videos this weekend here. And I was at the coin show, as you know, I talked about at the beginning here. Uh, sorry about the uh, quality of the video and the fact that I was looking at feet most of the time. But uh, uh, they got a lot of security at these shows. Uh, I'm going to answer a few questions here and see if there's any coin questions. There was that mu not that much. This was Friday's video. It usually gets out by noontime. We didn't get it out till Sunday morning, and I do apologize. Better late than never, I guess. Uh, but I could not get the uh, uh, big, big ass video <laughs> downloaded uh, uh, through the text or through the cloud. Uh, I, I just was having issue with it. Uh, first, thanks to oh yeah, you are first, sir. Nice to see you there. Um, slow down your video. It feels like it was taken by the Tasmanian Devil. Well, that's my nickname. No, I'm only kidding. I don't have that nickname. I, I actually have a lady that works for me that I call the Tasmanian Devil. Um, <laughs> uh, Mike Hernandez, thanks for watching. Uh, Mike Hernandez, beautiful silver hat. Thanks for their... Uh, yeah, that, that uh, was a sterling sombrero that I end up selling at the show. Uh, it weighed almost 100 ounces of sterling silver, if you noticed. Uh, uh, I have never... It's, and the person that bought it from me paid a little premium for it because they said, well, why, why do you want more? I said... You will never ever see a sterling sombrero like this again. So it was full size, huge, and I think it was meant to have a bottle of tequila in the top of it, or some uh, uh, cheese dip, or something, or whatever. Uh, it was meant as a serving piece, but you know, you'll see it in the video yesterday. Thanks for watching, Mike. Uh, thanks, John, watching you too, Audra and uh, uh, J uh, Jekyll. Uh, thanks for watching. Looks like fun. It was a fun show. Consequently, they call it the fun show. Florida United Numismatists uh, is the short for fun. Uh, Patrick Pearl says, how much does it cost to sell there, and are there limitations to sellers? Um, it these tables are not cheap. These tables are probably in the $1,500 range for an 8-foot table. Uh, so, uh, And then you've got uh, you know hotels, you've got uh, security, you've got some people want to have safes there. Uh, so they can get pretty expensive. You know, and then you've got employees you want to bring along. And they do kind of limit... Uh, they do they do allow collectible type items to be sold there but i think that uh you know they they would you know i don't know i don't know if someone could go in there with flowers or i don't know if someone could go in there selling tires or something you know i know there's jewelry vendors in there and a lot of collectible vendors i think anything that kind of falls all under the collectible field uh more than likely jewelry is a given uh, but i don't know about other stuff uh, but thanks for watching, Patrick. I really appreciate it. And uh, not many questions. Again, uh, sorry about the lateness of that video. It was my fault. Uh, I just couldn't get the thing uploaded. And I realized afterwards that iPhones need to be plugged in in order for them to download big files. And I never plugged my iPhone in because I thought I had enough juice. Best deals out there. I'll tell you, when I was at the show, I saw all kinds of best deals out there, or ideas what I thought were best deals, and none of them were silver. There are no best deals in silver whatsoever. Uh, so I don't know where people are saying that there's plentiful amounts of silver out there. Uh, I would agree that there is a lot of silver out there, but it's all in landfills. <laughs> Start digging, peeps. Uh, so uh, uh, that's where all the silver is. It's in landfills because it certainly is not in the hands of uh, uh, um, uh, people that are buying and selling bars and coins, uh, or at least to a limited supply it is right there. Uh, but as you know, my feeling is that uh, silver is uh, uh, a strategic metal because it has to be used in electronics, and that uh, uh, that the price is being purposely kept down because uh, I believe that uh, uh, 
one of the worst things that can happen is the price of silver goes up dramatically. That'll cost that'll cost a, a across the board increase in every uh, electronic product out there. Now I don't know how much silver has to go up to really affect manufacturers of electronic products and people that make silver solder, uh, but uh, uh, I am sure that it's part of the big picture here as well. So and the fact that we've been closed down for a year, there's no silver, man. There's just no silver out there. Very little silver. Um, you can pick it up in 100 ounce. It's just being sucked up, you know what I mean? Uh, which is, uh, and you know what? It's probably not private investors as much as it is all those short sellers that have been manipulating the price of silver down for so long. I think they're just in there accumulating physical every time they bang it down. Uh, some poor sob out there sells his 100 ounce silver bar because he doesn't know better. And then uh, uh, you've got these four short positions out there that are eventually going to end up with their, that silver bar like JPM, like JP Morgan did. Uh, ended up with uh, millions and millions of ounces of silver after manipulating the market for years and years and years. Uh, and you got more uh, short guys out there doing that. So this is what you got going on. Uh, combine that with the shortage uh, and the fact that they're probably getting most of the metal uh, because they're first in line. Uh, that's why the investors are not seeing as much. Uh, and the premiums are crazy. Uh, best deals out there are still anything I think that you can buy between four. I'm going to raise the premium a little bit that I've been talking about. Um, if you're between four and six dollars uh, and you're not paying more than that for some silver products, uh, I think that's a good deal. Uh, however, there's a, cr you know, I'm going to look at the sheet real quick and uh, tell you what, uh, uh, where's the sheet? All right, and uh, there's my keep it local below too. But uh, silver product, 90%'s come down a little bit, so about a quarter an ounce from last week. Uh, but oddly enough, uh, the uh, silver 100 ounce bars and uh, one ounce and 10 ounce products really haven't come down that much. There's still a shortage of uh, manufactured one ounce, 10 ounce, and uh, 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 mostly one and 10 ounce products. I suspect a lot of that product is going to the smaller investors like Silver Apes and such like that, uh, who are really uh, pulling that product off the market really fast. Uh, but for those folks out there that uh, think that the uh, one ounce and 10 ounce bars are too expensive or you don't want to wait to get them, 90% uh, seems to be readily available, good deal. Uh, silver commemoratives uh, have come down a little bit in price too, man. You can get those for melt plus three bucks. It's the same as a silver dollar. Uh, silver dollars, as I said at the show when I was up there selling uh, uh, my coins, you don't want to buy silver dollars. Don't don't be an investor in silver dollars right now unless you like collecting. If it's a collector thing, then yes. Uh, but investing in silver dollars right now, the premiums are just insane. And it has everything to do with the new 1921 dollar coming out, uh, the new Morgan dollar, you know, the old Mint Morgan and the new CC dollar the U.S. Mint's coming out with. Um, silver dollars are just hot right now. So the premiums are way up on them. Uh, but no less... Uh, um, my idea, my thought right now is I'd sell silver dollars, circulated silver dollars. I would sell any silver dollars with a big, again, if you're not a collector and, and you've managed to accumulate silver dollars uh, for close to their melt value, now's a great time to get rid of them. Uh, take the huge premium and buy the cheaper silver if you can get it. Uh, you'll put more silver in your stack by doing that. Uh, so again, four to six dollars right now is my range for silver. Uh, there are some products out there a little cheaper than that, like, as I said, the commemorative silver dollars, which you can still, while they're available, pick them up for a uh, spot plus three bucks. Uh, gold, same thing. Uh, gold, gold products is much more available than it was. And I don't think gold's in a, as such a major shortage as silver is. In fact, I've said a couple times, tongue in cheek, and maybe tongue in cheek, that uh, I feel that uh, silver, uh, uh, gold, there's probably more uh, gra above ground gold than there is silver. Uh, as far as uh, physical availability, uh, but that may not be true. Uh, Gold Eagles have come down about 20 bucks an ounce, 25 bucks an ounce. They're still well over $100, I think, on the sell side. Not a great deal. Best buys, best buys out there for uh, gold, I still think, are bars uh, where you can pick them up probably as low as 60 bucks and, uh, uh, you know, in that 60 to $85 range. Again, to get them down to that lower range than 60 bucks, and when I talk about the lower ranges on these, you got to buy a lot of them, folks, to get them at that level, like 100 coins or something or, or bars or whatever. Uh, no less, they can be bought that cheap in large quantities. Um, and maples have come down a little bit as well. So gold product seems to be readily available except for proof gold eagles. If you have proof gold eagles, here's a suggestion. Get rid of them right now. Proof, uh, whether they have boxes or not, the premiums on proof gold eagles are just insane right now. Why that last? You know, you can sell your proof gold eagles, get yourself a huge premium, and buy more gold and silver with it. Again, add more to your stack. Um, so the premiums are off the hook on proof gold eagles. I'd, if I owned them, and I and I do, uh, I'd sell them and I'd buy back cheaper product with it. Um, well, 
Uh, boy, what a long one today, and it's good to be back home. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins, and as you know, uh, I'm a local business only. I do not sell outside of Lauderdale by the Sea, so if you want to deal with me, you have to physically come and see me. Uh, we don't do uh, uh, phone sales. We don't do internet sales. Uh, maybe someday it will, but uh, right now we don't. Uh, we're just a brick and mortar. Uh, I do advertise to my brick and mortar local customer. My brick. I do advertise to my local customers that I uh, advertise to uh, beat or meet. Uh, mostly beat at Atmex, uh, JM, and SD Bullion for products that we have, and they have. Uh, I can beat their prices. They're good companies, don't get me wrong. Uh, however, as I've always said, uh, if you can keep that money local, whether you're living in my area or whether you're living in Georgia, Iowa, California, wherever you are, even my friend in Dubai who gets good prices, I think, except on silver, <laughs> um, I always recommend keep it local, you know. Um, and this applies to jewelry, uh, tires, whatever, your local auto parts. You know, I'm a big fan of keeping your money local, even if you have to pay a tiny bit more uh, because it keeps, you know, it, it pays for jobs. It keeps businesses open. It's good for your community. So when at all possible, when you're buying precious metals, rare coins, collectibles, uh, that kind of thing, uh, keep it local, folks. It's important to your, your town. It's important to the people that you live with. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals at um, <laughs> beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea, as I always say. Uh, call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And uh, that's really about it. Uh, let's see what happens today, and I hope you have a great day, and I'm looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye now.